we rely on calendars to remind us of everything from our birthdays to anniversaries, appointments, holidays, even religious observances are set up around a calendar. And throughout history, cultures have devised their own calendars largely based on natural intervals of time. For example, the day, a time we now know as 24 hours, there's also the cycles of the moon, that is how long it takes for the moon to complete one cycle of phases. And this lasts approximately one month, that is 29 and a half days. And then there are the seasons, a period of time that we call the year. And it works out to about 365 days. So an ideal calendar would be able to bring all three of these natural cycles into a perfect synchronization. But if you look at the values of these cycles, you quickly realize that they don't divide evenly into one another. Many early calendars were lunisolar calendars. And in fact, some lunisolar calendars still exist today, namely the Hebrew, Jain, uh, Vietnamese, Islamic calendars. These are all examples of calendars that would attempt to synchronize the phases of the moon with the seasons. And for this reason, the dates of several religious holidays will vary from one year to the next so that they can remain in sync with the moon's phases. This is a reproduction of an early Roman calendar, and, and this was widely used throughout the Roman Empire. Initially, the hope was to confine the year to just 10 months, and that made some sense since 10 is a very simple number to, uh, to divide by. But it wasn't long before this calendar got woefully out of date with the seasons. So King Pompilus added two extra months, Inarius and Februarius, which we now call January and February. And in addition to that, altered the lengths of days of the year. This was all with the intent of keeping the middle of the months aligned with the full moon. So ideally, a month would begin at the new moon, the midpoint would mark the full moon, and then by the end of the month, they'd be back to new moon once again. However, there is a major problem with this. This calendar would quickly get out of date with the seasons, and so a separate month was added every four years to realign the Roman calendar with the seasons. This was called the month of intercalaris. And not only that, but on those years, even the days of the other remaining months would be altered a little bit to help keep the seasons in line with the calendar. Finally, Julius Caesar just decided to abandon the whole idea of keeping track of moon phases and introduced the first modern solar calendar. It doesn't even bother to keep track of the phases of the moon. It just approximates the year at about 365 and a quarter days. And to get around the fact that there is no such thing as a quarter day, every four years would include an extra day. This approach was accurate to about one day in every 128 years. And what I mean by that is if you take, for example, the day of the vernal equinox, we know today it should occur on or about March 21st of every year. It turns out this calendar did a reasonable good job of it. It was introduced on January 1st, 46 BC. But the problem was that over time, it did start to drift out of sync with the seasons. But by 1582, the sun was arriving on the vernal equinox a full 10 days ahead of schedule. And this was shifting the corresponding religious celebrations earlier and earlier. Eventually, they understood Easter would be celebrated in what we now call late December, early January, which was really just not exactly in keeping with the spirit of Easter. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII introduced the Gregorian calendar, and we use it to this day. It includes a 365-day common year, and a leap year is defined if the year is divisible by four, but it is not a leap year if the year is evenly divisible by 100, unless... The year is also divisible by 400, and then a 29th day of February is added to that year. It's a little bit clunky, but it works, and it turns out that the Gregorian calendar is accurate to one day every 32, 36 years, 3,236 years, which is really not bad. But to introduce this calendar, at sooner or later, a year had to be altered. So in February of 1582, the paper bull Intergravisamus announced that the month of October, 
1582 will have 10 days subtracted from it. And, well, this made people angry, but it actually did work. And once with that one-time change, we've been able to keep our seasons in sync with the year. Now, you may be thinking, well, is there a way to make an even more accurate calendar? And in fact, there is a calendar that is out there to this day. It was developed in 1923 by Milutin Milankovic, and he was, an, he was an astronomer and a mathematician, and he worked out a formula for leap years that are evenly divisible by four, unless they are also evenly divisible by 100, and the remainder is neither 200 nor 600 when divided by 900. It's a little bit of a clunky algorithm, but it's actually a lot more accurate. It's accurate to one day every 31,250 years. That's about 10 times more accurate than the modern Gregorian calendar. However, this calendar was never intended to be a civil calendar. Um, Milankovic is, was uh, Orthodox, and this was a calendar that he devised for the Orthodox Church, and most still rely on the old Julian calendar. They're not even on the Gregorian calendar, but a couple of Orthodox churches make use of Milankovic's revised Julian calendar. Now, one of the reasons we don't bother to switch over to the revised Julian is because we're going to remain in sync with the Gregorian calendar until February 29th, 2800. On that day, the revised Julian calendar will be marked as March 1st, 2800. So is there such thing as a perfect calendar? No, there is no perfect calendar. After all, even the solar year, which we can calculate to a very high precision, is an average value. It too can vary on account of lots of reasons. So we even have to introduce leap seconds to correct for all of these sorts of changes. And as a matter of fact, the uh, U.S. Naval Observatory introduced a leap second as recently as December 31st, 2016. They added an extra leap second just to keep our calendar in sync with the seasons. And these sorts of tiny little adjustments are going to continue to be made for the foreseeable future.